Today, we're going to take a look at how to install the Bontech BMG extruder on the Ender 3 Pro. My name is Alex, and this is Modified 3D. So the first thing we're going to want to do is remove that spring that's holding tension on the extruder arm. We'll go ahead and take our Allen key and remove the uh, bolt that holds the little ferrule in. Alright, once that bolt's out, we can just simply push aside the spring and that'll come out. We can jump to our next size bigger Allen key and go ahead and remove the extruder arm. And just like that, the extruder arm comes out. Grab the bolt that we threw to the side and we can switch back to our smaller size Allen key. Go ahead and remove this. And you guys can't see it right now, but there is a ton of ground up filament just all in there because this extruder is just trash. It worked great for a week or two and then just went to hell. I tried changing the gear. I tried a bunch of different shit, but anyways, go ahead and make sure you're supporting the bottom of the stepper motor. Just like when you installed this thing, pull the top out and the motor will just fall out. As you see, mine's connected. So I'm just gonna very carefully move it to the side and free it from the cable chains. Then what I'll do is go ahead and just pull this off from the chains because this mount isn't gonna be used anymore. All right, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna go ahead and remove our old extruder gear from the stepper motor shaft. We're just gonna take our small Allen key and go ahead and disconnect it. And it slides off just like that. And we're gonna take our new one out of the parts bag. And I wanna note that there's a correct and incorrect way of doing this. And the correct way is gonna be with the screw facing up to the top. And set that piece aside. There's our screw and our gear. So we'll go ahead and place this set screw in place. Man, that thing's tiny. And we'll just get it started. So we're gonna wanna line up that set screw with the flat spot on the shaft. Before I do that, I wanna clean out, let's see if I can get this on camera here, all that junk. Let me turn this, see if that helps out a little bit. All that junk in there is just ground up filament from the old uh, extruder. No matter what I did, I could never get it to stop grinding. So I'll take a little Q-tip, and this is just a Q-tip that I got with my Slice Engineering uh, Boron Nitride Paste. It seems to work really well because it's pointed. And we can just pull all that shit out there. Now that's in, we can go ahead and place our gear on. We want to place this about a millimeter or so above the base. So take this Allen key, it's about a two millimeter Allen key. I'll put that there and not oh, too much, just a hair down below it. And of course, before you do that, make sure your set screw is centered. Just like that, hold it in place and tighten it down. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our mounting adapter bracket and we're gonna install the stepper onto it now. And it's gonna sit just like that um, where the plug is facing away from the screws. That way when we mount it on the printer, the plug's just facing down. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our mounting adapter bracket and we're gonna install the stepper onto it now. And it's gonna sit 
just like that, um, where the plug is facing away from the screws. That way when we mount it on the printer, the plug's just facing down. Um, I was thinking about mounting it like this, but I'm thinking that I'll run into issues with hitting the lead screw that way. So we'll just go like that. And you can see it those both ways the uh, the holes line up. So I don't know. I guess it's all just experimenting and playing. It's not like these come with instructions. There are a couple videos on YouTube that I watched. To be honest, I didn't pay attention to the orientation. But uh, anyways, we got this on. Um, I don't see why we can't mount our extruder. So we'll take these two pieces. And here is our um, adapter piece so that we can run Bowden uh, instead of running direct drive. And I believe, yep, it only goes in one way. So it is idiot proof. And then we just line this all up. Push that in. And we're good. So now the next thing to do <clears throat> would be to just simply place this on. And we will put our screws in. When you're tightening these down, you want to make sure you're not tightening them down all uh, like one at a time. Just do a couple threads on each one and then move to the next. This will ensure that it's going down smooth and evenly. Um, and then also check in here, make sure that the screw, or sorry, the bolt is actually grabbing. If it's missing, you're gonna notice that it's separating here. So ensure that you're not cross-threading your bolts. You're not, you know, make sure the bolts are actually hitting it. And we'll just go nice and easy with it. Right, so we got the top screwed in. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and take our adjustment tension thumb wheel and we're just gonna go ahead and screw this in and this will just keep that arm from spinning around. Next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and remove these four bolts on the top and go ahead and mount this to the actual machine. All right, so this is just gonna come in here like this and we can hold it in place as we thread in our bolts. So now that we have that done, we can go ahead and plug in our motor. And to do that, we're just gonna have to reach underneath here and make it easier if we just move this Z-rod up a little bit. And plug that in. I guess later I'll rerun this back up through the links the full route before I didn't have it in these two links for whatever reason. But um, now we can go ahead and, well, looks like our filament sensor isn't going to work anymore. So what we'll do is we'll have to figure out a solution for that. But in the meantime, we are gonna have to pull out these two bolts in here and reattach that to our lead screw. Um, oh, I'm forgetting the name for it, that bracket. When you're tightening these down, you don't actually tighten them down all the way. Um, you go until it's tight and then you back it off about a full turn. You do want some movement in there and that'll help absorb any uh, binding issues that you could run into. So <clears throat> for binding, you're gonna notice a lot of accuracy issues and whatnot. So you just wanna make sure that that can actually wiggle inside that frame. And look at that. We got ourselves a Bontech BMG 
all mounted up nice and fancy. It looks good. Last step will be to take our Bowden tube. Go ahead and reinstall that. And make sure it's seated all the way in. It'll click. What I'll do now is I will just go ahead and unmount my filament runout sensor from this uh, mount. And we will run this as a freestanding filament runout sensor for the time being. It'll just kind of sit right at the edge of the Bontech. That's not gonna hurt nothing. Plenty of people run it that way. Uh, a lot of people actually prefer it without a mount because in the event of a jam or even just feeding it and whatnot, it makes it easier. So this will just sit like that. So we got two more things left to do until we're completely done with our install and can be up and printing. The first thing that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to flip the motor direction and there's two ways that you can do it. The way that I'm gonna do it is the easy way and that's by doing it in the firmware. If your machine doesn't have a bootloader or you don't have a, a way to edit the firmware, you're gonna have to actually go and swap some wires on the back of your JST connector that goes into the stepper motor. Uh, personally, I don't remember which ones to flip, but there are videos and forms, plenty of documentation online. Uh, however, because I do have the TH3D Easy Board installed in this, I can just go on their Easy Configurator, redo my firmware for this, and in the settings, just click and uh, there's a, an option there essentially to flip the motor direction. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that right now and we'll flash the new firmware onto here. After we get that done, we can calibrate our E-steps. We're gonna have to change our E-step value in the firmware or you know, on the machine, however you wanna do it. Powered by Bontech. So I totally forgot to film me um, calibrating the actual extruder. However, it's very, very easy to do. All you're gonna do is load some filament up and preheat your nozzle. Then you're gonna go ahead and tell the printer to move 100 millimeters of filament. You're gonna, before you do that, you're gonna mark a line 100 millimeters back with a Sharpie on the filament. And then you're gonna measure the distance um, between how much it didn't extrude or how much it did extrude. Uh, there's formulas online to show you for calibrating the E-steps is what it's called. Uh, however, I didn't even need to calibrate the E-steps on it or change the number. Uh, the 415 that was recommended from Bontech turned out to be 100% spot on perfect for the Ender 3, at least in my setup. And that's with the tension wheel, about two and a half turns to three turns in. And that's it for the Bontech BMG install. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.